There are several things China could do to pressure Taiwan short of full-scale invasion. One of them is to cut the island off in a sort of blockade. What that would look like and how the U.S. and allies could respond is the subject of a report by Bradley Martin. He's a director and senior policy researcher at RAND. Brad, welcome to the program. I'm delighted to be here. I use the term blockade, but China doesn't see it that way. They don't see it as a blockade because a blockade implies that a nation is sovereign and that it, it's an act of war against a nation that is able to exercise sovereignty. China does not view Taiwan's government as being a sovereign, legitimate government, so it would call an action a quarantine instead of a blockade. And that's really the focus of our report. So what would China try to accomplish by doing that? By doing that, they would exercise sovereignty over the area around Taiwan. They would say, we are preventing the movement of things that we don't view as being uh, legitimate. And they would be able to say to Taiwan, if you receive this, we're going to stop it, we're going to uh, inspect it, we're going to treat it as if it were something coming into Shanghai. So really it's a power move. It's not so much that they're going to try to block, you know, the flow of people, food. They're not trying to do that. Not, not in that stage of the uh, quarantine. As, as a quarantine were imposed, instead of it being something to try to deny food or energy or something like that, it would, as you say, be a power grab by the People's Republic to say that Taiwan has no right to uh, exercise control over what comes and goes into the country. So how easy is it, would it be for China to do that? China has a very large People's uh, Armed Forces maritime militia. It has a Coast Guard. It obviously has a very large Navy and conventional Air Force and that type of thing, but they really wouldn't need that for this particular uh, uh, evolution. They would be able to do this readily. It would obviously take them some time to organize and they'd have to impose some rules of engagement and that type of thing. But this is not something that would be difficult for a, a, a large nation like China to execute. So then, Brad, why haven't they done it already, if it's so easy? I suspect the major reason is that they're looking for ways to continue to pressure Taiwan. They would prefer to take the softest possible approach. This would be the type of thing they might attempt if they felt like Taiwan was not serious about a reconciliation. They, it would be a, a case of them doing something, uh, it's a step above just normal peacetime pressure, but short of an all-out all war. So would a blockade quarantine of Taiwan be enough to trigger a U.S. response? And then what about other allies? The U.S. would be constrained to answer China's actions. What this would involve is China imposing something that we've said we don't agree with. Some type of reaction would likely be necessary. This would best be accomplished if in the uh, company of allies. So it would be an international response. How effective that response would be would depend on a lot of other things, like how well the United States exercised its, its diplomacy. You don't like the idea of the U.S. enacting a counter blockade of China. A Why not? A counter blockade would be almost wholly ineffective. China is a very large, very well uh, connected economy. For us to try to, to, to impose a blockade, a quarantine or whatever on China would be almost impossible. Certainly, if you look at how rapidly the pressure would build up on Taiwan, that would be a matter of weeks. Against China, it's a matter of years at best. Well, let's talk about semiconductors. Yes. How big of a player is Taiwan in the semiconductor market? And what kind of impact would a quarantine of Taiwan have on the markets? Taiwan is a massive participant in the world semiconductor industry. And in fact, it produces 90% uh, of the most advanced chips, the things that are really going into the cutting edge technology. So disruption of uh, Taiwan's export of, of, of semiconductors would be a huge deal, or the products that go with semiconductors. It would be a real problem for the world economy. Uh, the consequences of having that cut off would be inability to, to manufacture some really key components that we've come to rely on. 
which we're really feeling right now. So what do you recommend to lessen the vulnerability of the global supply chain? There are several things that need to take place. One thing is that the United States and the, its allies, the rest of the world, need to be thinking about how we can find other sources of, of semiconductor production. This is a long-term thing. This is not something that happens overnight. This is something that would involve uh, a partnership with industry, partnership with, or, with other countries. It, it's a type of thing that would have to take place uh, over a period of years. Nevertheless, if it's not done, then we're, we're in a position of very great vulnerability when it comes to Taiwan. You also recommend forward deploying U.S. forces, mm -hmm. U.S. troops. Yeah. Give us some specifics on that. The specifics there are that if a something like a quarantine is imposed and the United States wants to react to it, if it, if it takes two or three weeks or a month for it to, to muster the force to at least present some sort of reaction, that's time that Taiwan is getting into steadily more dire straits. It, it's not necessary that the, the forces be used, but it is necessary they be there if they're going to be used. So for deployment, the, and specifically naval and air forces, the type of things that are, are already fairly heavily deployed in East Asia would be the type of thing I'm, I'm talking about. Although that would be an escalatory move, wouldn't it? It would be escalatory depending on how conveyed. It's, it's certainly, they're certainly there to communicate to, to China that, it, that the United States will not uh, allow or will, will react to aggressive moves on their part but it is at the same time not directly provocative. It's not like we're saying we're going to attack China if you, you do something. It is a measured response which is uh, of limited escalatory potential. All right. Well, Brad, I want to thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about this. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the chance to discuss this with you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.